Now we're going to talk a little bit about solution concentration. Solution concentration is generally expressed as a ratio between the solute and either the solvent or the solution. In this class, the one that we will be using for all of our calculations will be the amount of solute divided by the amount of solution. All calculations will use this ratio. We will talk about the other ones, but we don't use them for calculations. Now, let's look at the term percent, which is literally parts per hundred. And that is specifically the parts of solute over 100 parts of solution. Notice it says 100, and that's why you call it a percent, and it says per 100. Before we talk about the chemistry, we need to do a little review of the math to talk about percents. There are two types of percent questions. The two terms that I would use are find it and use it. Let's bring in an example from your daily life. Let's try. I have a class with 20 men and 40 women in it. What is the percentage of men in the class? So the first step is to decide whether you have a find it or a use it type of problem. The find it type problems will ask for the percent, whereas the use it type problems will tell you the percent in the problem. In this case, it appears that we have a find it. The second step is to define your terms. What is the solute? What's the solvent? And what is the solution? So you should recall that the one we have less of is called the solute, and the one we have more of is the solvent. So where's our solution? In this case, when we're given the solute and the solvent, we need to add them together to find the solution. Recall that a solution is a mixture of the solute and the solvent. And mathematically, that would be the solute plus the solvent gives us the solution. Now we can do the math. For all of our concentration problems, we will have solute. So we'll have solute on top and solution on the bottom. And we'll multiply that ratio by 100%. On your calculator, you should only hit the percent or the 100, not both. So the solute was our 20 min. And the solution is our 20 men plus our 40 women. So again, we have our 20 men, which is our solute, and then we're going to divide that by our 20 men plus 40 women, which put together is your solution. That's the same as 20 men for every 60 students multiply by 100%. And our calculator says that is equal to 33.33 and it continues on. And that would be percent men. The same question could have been asked a slightly different way. Here we can see that the question now says my class of 60 students has 20 men. Now what is the percentage of men? Here we can see that our solute is our number of men is still the same. But in this version, we've told you that we have 60 students total, which is our solution. In this case, we're looking at this section of the problem, and we end up with the same answer. Now let's look at a problem that is a use it problem. So in this sample, I have a class of 30 students that is 10% men. How many men are actually in the class? I'm going to guess you can already do this off the top of your head, but what is the pattern you should use? Step one, define what type of problem you have. Here you can see that I'm given the percent, so I obviously should not be looking for it, I should be using it. And that percent can be written as 10 men for every 100 students. And once again, the men are our solute 
and the students are the solution. And the number 10 came from the number that was given at the start of the problem. Now we find our 30 students and use the 10% ratio that we were given. Canceling out the terms, putting the numbers into our calculator, we end up with three men. When we switch this into chemical calculations, you won't see men, women, students, but you will see sodium chloride in water makes a solution. But don't let the use of chemical terms throw you off. In chemistry, there are three common types of percent concentrations. All of the percent concentrations have solute on top and solution on bottom. What they vary in is what type of unit is being used to do the measurements. The name of the percent calculation tells you which one to use. So in the case of percent by mass, you're going to be using a measurement that is in mass. Generally, we're going to be talking about something in grams, but it could be in kilograms, it could be in even in pounds, as long as the top and the bottom are both in the same unit. When we talk about percent by volume, we're talking about something that is in volume, the volume on top and the volume on the bottom. So in this case, we usually use milliliters, but it could be liters, it could be kiloliters, it could be microliters, it could even be gallons or cups, as long as it is the same on both the top and the bottom. The last one is the percent by mass volume. Now, per percent mass volume uses both mass and volume, and this one we don't generally change the units. This one is almost always in grams per milliliter. For each of these, there are two major types of calculations. They are the find the percent, that we call find it, and the use the percent, what I call use it. So in the find it percent, it's going to say how we calculate the percentage. For those questions, we're always going to look for the amount of solute on top of the amount of solution given in the question, and then multiply by 100%. When we do a use it, it's always going to be the amount of solute divided by the amount of solution. Whatever number you are given in the question is going to go on top. You're going to divide that by 100 because it's saying it's that, that percentage. And then we'll be able to use that as a ratio to convert our original amount of solution into the amount of solute that was present. In the next video, we'll give you some practice with this.